This video will help you learn about this thing called a power. So today's learning outcome will be asking you to learn how to evaluate a power with an integer base. You know, I always like doing shortcuts because I'm kind of lazy. Is there a simpler way of doing shortcuts for repeated multiplication? So take a look at example number one here. And I'm going to say, hey, can you write the following in a simpler way? 4 times 4. Have you seen that written a different way before? Yeah, if you said 4 squared, I like it. How about 2 times 2 times 2? Well, yeah, that's 2, and some people say 2 to the exponent of 3 or 2 cubed. And then what about this last one? I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3's all multiplied together. And if you wrote down 3 to the power of 5, you are right. Now the three things you've written down are called powers, and powers are really just products of equal factors. Let's look at example B again. That's this one here. 2 times 2 times 2 is a product of how many equal factors? Ah, yes, three of them. So what I want you to understand is that the exponent, and that's the key word for today, <coughs> excuse me, the exponent is the number of equal factors. And the other number, which in this case is 2, is called the base. And that is the fact that is repeated. So base is 2, exponent is 3, and this whole thing is called a power. So 2 times 2 times 2 can be written in what we call exponential form as 2 to the power of 3. This can be said in a few different ways. I just wrote down one for you. 2 to the, and some people use the word exponent, others use the word power. So, you know, just understand that the first number is the base and the second number in this statement is your exponent. Or in this case, 2 with 3 can be often written as 2 cubed. Now there are other ways of saying it, but these are the two that are most common. Let's see if we can connect the idea of powers with area and volume. We learned that last year in grade 8, and I have some visuals here for you. So if I asked you to write the number of unit squares in this large square as a power, you would say, okay, let's take a look. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in a row, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in a column. This is a 7 times 7 square, so 7 times 7 is the same thing as 7 squared. Written as words, that's 7 squared. Or 7 to the exponent of 2. Okay, so that's how we get that square idea with area. Like if you have units, it would be centimeters squared, right? How about this thing with a cube now? Let's look at the number of unit cubes as a power. In this case, we've got a three-dimensional object. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Count with me the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is now seven cubed, or seven to the exponent of three. So that's the visual representation of the exponents of 2 and 3. It gets a little harder when we get to 4, 5, 6, because you're looking at four dimensions, fifth dimensions. Maybe you can go to the computer and do a little quick search and see what these, those things look like. All right, turn the page. So what I want you to understand today is also not just being able to write powers, but to evaluate powers. So to evaluate powers, you can calculate in your head or use a calculator. And if you use your calculator, sometimes we have this button. My calculator here, let me pull it up. Woo! The power button is actually this thing here. This little, I call it like a hat. Okay, so if I did 5 hat 2, that's 5 to the exponent of 2, there's my answer. So that's my button. But then yours might be a little bit different. So I've seen other things like this. Y to the X or X to the Y. So... Go ahead and look in your calculator to see if you can find it. And if you can't, come find me in class next day, and I'll show you where your power button is on your calculator. So from example 2b, that was, I think, 2 cubed. So I write down 2. In my case, I press the hat key, and then I press the 3. And I know you're like, Mr. Lee, I already got this. I know it's 8. And that's fine. I'm just using your calculator to make sure it's also right. Okay. Sometimes when you evaluate a power, they'll ask you to just write it in standard form. So this number 8 is also this thing called standard form, or evaluate. All right? Just give me the number. That's what evaluate means. All right, ladies and gents, I'd like you to try example 3 on your own. This has a table. I'm going to ask you to figure out how you can write powers in words, repeated multiplication, exponential form, and standard form. 
So I'll do the first row for you, and maybe you can fill in the rest. All right. So in A, it says 9 squared. And as repeated multiplication, I'm asking you, how many 9s am I multiplying together? And if you think squared is 2 9s, you are correct. So that's 9 times 9. In exponential form, what would that be? That would be the base of 9 to the exponent of 2. And the standard form just means calculate it. So 9 times 9 is 81. And there you go. You've completed row A. So see if you can now go and try to complete row B. Okay. In row B, I give you the exponential form. And you don't have to go in order, but maybe just figure out what you can do. I'm thinking I'd probably go and write down the words first. This is, what, 7 to the exponent of 5. Repeated multiplication, I think I can do. And I hope you can too. And then finally, standard form I probably can't do in my head, so I'll bring up my calculator. 7 to the exponent of 5. Whoa, 16,807. Big number. Okay. Now, C might be a little bit trickier, where I just give you the standard form. And now it's your job to do the rest. Now, what's 36? Hmm. Think to yourself, what exponent equals 36? If you know your perfect squares, you'd say, yeah, 6 squared. So that's just 6 times 6 for repeated multiplication. And you can use the word 6 squared. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> and then how about the last one? What's my base here? Ah, negative 5. So I'll say negative 5. And then when I have three things multiplied together, I can use the word cubed. So negative 5 cubed. In exponential form, negative 5. And I would like you to keep the bracket because you're taking the entire negative 5 and cubing it. Using the calculator bracket, negative 5, power 3, ah, negative 125. There you go. Okay. Now, you see how I said keep the bracket in example 3D? Notice that the base was negative. Okay. Notice that the standard form was also negative. So, just to be aware, the standard form numbers can be positive, like the first three examples, or negative, like the last one. So in order for us to understand this a little bit better, let's do example number four. And I hope with these three examples, you'll see the effects of a negative sign and how it can change your answer with powers. So in this case, I've given you the exponential form or the power, and I would like you to identify the base then the exponent, then write down the repeated multiplication, and then finally give me the standard form answer. Okay? So, first one for A. Hmm. What's the base? And if you said negative 5, I am happy. Okay? What's the exponent? If you said 4, I am even more happy. And if you do repeated multiplication as negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, I am ecstatic. And now, what's the standard form? Once again, using my calculator, bracket, negative 5, raised to the power of 4, 625. Okay. Now, B is a little bit different. What's the difference between A and B? Did you say no brackets? Correct. So the question is, what's my base now? And if you wrote down negative 5, I'd say, sorry, not this time. This time, without the bracket, the base is only the integer 5. Okay? The exponent is still 4. So what does this repeated multiplication look like? It's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. But then you still have a negative in front, so it's just a negative in front of this right here. So when you evaluate this, you're thinking, okay, I know what 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is, right? This part here is 5 to the power of 4, and that's 625. But now, because I have a negative sign in front, this just becomes negative now 625. Do you see the difference? In part A, four negative signs, because the base was negative 5. In part B, only one negative sign, because there's no bracket. So now let's do part C. Whoa, negative bracket, negative 5, close bracket to the exponent of 4. Whoa. 
So let you think about this one, okay? What's the base? What's the exponent? And what's repeated multiplication? Try it on your own. If you're thinking, what, 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 what's going on? I'm just doing the negative 5 to the power of 4. That's just this part right here. And then now, yes, I know that there's still a negative in front. So I will put a negative in front of this. And I know from part A that this part is equal to 625, a positive 625. So my final answer in this case is also negative 625. Whoa! Are you confused yet? So, be careful with these negative bases. That's where a lot of us get confused. I like you to remember bed mass. Remember brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, adding, subtraction? That applies here too. So wherever you see brackets, of course, you do that first. And then wherever you see exponents, do that next before you apply the negative sign in front. Because that negative sign is really just like a multiplication of negative 1. So note, for negative 5 power 4, the exponent... 4 only applies to the base of 5 and not the negative sign 2. Okay? Once again, this is different than part A. So, understanding this, I'm going to ask you to try now example number 5 and see if you can get these answers yourself. And then afterwards, see if you can answer the question underneath. Okay? If you have a power with a negative base, how can you determine if the standard form answer, that means this number up here, is positive or negative? Okay? So I'm going to let you try this on your own, stop the video so you can try it, and then when you come back, double check your answers. And by the way, you can use a calculator if you can't do 7 to the power of 5 in your brain. Okay? Stop video, or pause it at least, and then come back when you're done. This is negative 7, right? To the power of 5. That's just like this. So if I asked you to even predict, is it going to be negative? Your answer should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 negative signs. You bet. So this is actually negative 16,807. 7 to the power of 6. Hmm. I don't know that either. Wow. 117,649. I guess I should put equal signs on all these. Oopsies. And then this one here, negative 7 to the power of 6. So I'm going to write that out as repeated multiplication. I think it always helps when I do that. Because now I get to see how many negative signs there are. And there are six of them. It's an even number of negative signs. So the answer must be not negative, but positive. So this is actually positive negative 117649 or 117649. And I can double check that with my calculator. Oh, yeah, also positive. So the big thing from today is if you have a power with negative base, how can you tell if the standard form answer is positive? or negative. So look at my two examples here from above. Here's one that is negative, here's one that's positive. What was different about the negative signs? Okay. Uh -huh. If you're thinking part B, the negative signs were odd, the answer was negative, you are correct. And if you're thinking about part D, if there are an even number of factors, or the exponent is even, then notice there are an even number of negative signs, of course, which will make the answer positive. Okay, so write it out in words somehow, and I'll write it this way. And your word answer doesn't have to be exactly like mine, but if it's close, we're good. So I wrote down this. If the exponent is odd, then your standard form answer is negative. Of course, if the exponent is even, I'm just being lazy, the standard form is positive. And the question is why? You should say something like this. Because you are multiplying together and odd, oops, an odd number or even number of negative signs. So remember the rules that you learned 
from grade 8 or grade 7 about multiplying integers, it applies here too. Okay, we're done.